Greg, the world is complex. I want to. You bet it is. <laughs> I want to understand the world, and so I've got to understand complexity. You've come at this problem very differently. You talk about algorithmic information theory, and you've created this concept of omega that really has had some significant impact on how we think about complexity. How does that work? Well, again, I'm not looking at the physical world or the biological world. I'm trying, I'm looking at a toy world, which is the world of pure math. And that should be easier than the real world, right? Or yes. than biology, right? right? So it's, I think it's a good place to start. So what I've, what omega is, what this number is, it's sort of like the DNA of mathematical truth. Another way to put it is, take all of mathematical truth, which is a big lump of coal, yeah. and squeeze it at high temperature and pressure, and you end up with a diamond, which is concentrated essence of mathematical truth. Now, when you compress something, if you take a file and you compress it on your computer, when the file compression program ends, finishes with it, it looks random, because of it, it looks like meaningless noise, like total junk. Because if it had any structure at all or looked like English text, then the compression program didn't do a good job. Right. So once I finish compressing out all the redundancy from mathematical truth, I end up with this, this very hard nugget of truth, <laughs> compressed as much as possible, which I call the omega number. And that number is absolutely, in a way, random. It's maximum complexity. It's, from the point of view of a rational mind, it is the worst case. It's your worst nightmare if you're a rational being. Because the normal notion of rationality is that if something is true, we can understand why it's true. We can prove it. Right. Reason will enable us to understand and show what is happening. Right. And the bits of omega, this is a number which has a... To get it with infinite accuracy, you have to have an infinite number of digits after the decimal point. Or you have to have an infinite number of bits after the binary point. Anyway, the bits of this number are absolutely... Uh, how do you put it, irreducible mathematical truth. They seem to have absolutely no structure. They So you can't express it other, any other way other than saying exactly what every number would Well, be. I can define this number mathematically rather easily. It's something called the halting probability of a, of a general purpose computer. The halting probability of a universal Turing machine is what the computer theorists say. But if you want to know the numerical value of this number, which is defined very simply from an abstract mathematical point of view... As, it, as probability. It's a probability, right. So it's between a zero and a one. Right. A one would mean that all programs halt. A zero would mean that no programs halt. Some programs halt and some don't. So it has to be between zero and one. It's, bet it's between okay. zero and one. And let's say you want to know it very accurately, bit by bit or digit by digit. Well, it turns out, even though this number has a very simple definition, it's the halting probability of a, of a general purpose computer when monkeys type in the program, you know, yeah, right. at the keyboard. Um, it turns out this number is sort of maximally unknowable. It's so, it's, why do I say it's the worst nightmare for the rational mind? Because each of these bits of this number has to be either 0 or 1. If you write it in binary, in, in, in decimal it would be 0 to 9, but let's right. go in binary. Well, it turns out that each of these bits is sort of an independent atomic mathematical fact. It's one bit of divine inspiration. You know, you have to ask God for one. It's a complete surprise. It's a complete surprise even if you know the first million bits. God already told you the first million bits of Omega. You want to know the next bit? It's a complete surprise whether it's so delicately balanced between zero and one. Even if you knew all the even bits, it wouldn't give you any help to get any of the odd bits. It, it simulates within the world of pure mathematics uh, independent toss of a fair coin, complete randomness, maximum entropy, maximum unexpectedness, maximum lack of structure. So this is the opposite extreme from the traditional notion associated notably with David Hilbert, a famous German mathematician. The normal notion of mathematics is that all of the infinite world of mathematical truth comes from a small set of axioms, yeah. principles, right. that we can all agree on right. just using logic. And that's why mathematics was supposed to give absolute truth. So that would mean that all this infinite world of mathematical truth can be compressed into, you know, a page of axioms, of principles. And, and everything the rules derived of, from that. Everything derived from that. Now, in practice, it may be a very long proof, and we may never find it. But right. in principle, this says why mathematical truth is black or white. Right. It either derives from those principles that are agreed on by the rules of logic, in which case it's true, or it doesn't, in which case it's false. Okay, that's enormous. So there's an enormous compression of the infinite world of mathematical truth in a page or two of principles that all mathematicians think, thought they knew. Okay, what I've shown is that every bit of this number, the numerical value of this number, is a complete surprise and really is an independent principle that you have to add to the, your, the, the, the rules of mathematics.
You see, it's the, 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 num the value of this number is a place where mathematical truth has absolutely no structure. And the only way to be able to prove what, say, the first million bits of this number are is essentially to, do it. to put the first million bits as, yeah. as an axiom. In other words, you have to say, yeah. God, please yeah. inspire me, and then just write it down. You know? yeah. But that, you, know, you can prove anything by adding it as a new axiom. What it means is this is a place where mathematical truth has absolutely no structure, no compressibility at all. And in principle, it's impossible ever to do it. Yes. It's, it's sort of a worst case for the rational mind. The normal notion is that everything can be derived from a small number of principles using reason, and this is a case where essentially nothing can be derived. You really need one, they're independent atomic mathematical facts, each bit, whether it's a zero or one, which have no connection with any other mathematical fact or with each other. What is the significance for, for this in terms of understanding how complexity arises in the world? I mean, this is a fundamental part of the world. Well, this is a place of pure mathematics. The world of mathematics, here I have infinite an infinite object with irreducible complexity. It looks sort of maximally complex. Every bit is a complete surprise. It seems to have absolutely no structure. So this is, this is pretty bad from the point of view of, 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 say, the rational ideal, you know, passing through Leibniz back to classical Greece, was the notion that reason enables us, has no limits, that we can understand everything. That the right way to understand something is to reason about it, not to my army is bigger than your army, right. or, you know, uh, I'm going to get drunk and wait for a mystical experience to tell me the answer. Right. You know, reason. Uh, and this is a place where it doesn't really... It's impossible. Reason just... It, 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 it's a barrier beyond which you cannot go. Yeah, yeah. I think this is sort of a worst case. This is something where reason doesn't help you at all. Where the only way to prove something is if you... Somehow you're inspired, you know. In other words, for each bit of omega, if you believe, you know, to use a metaphor, you need to ask an oracle, or you need to ask God one yes-no question for each bit of omega. And so it's like an additional axiom you have yeah. to answer. So this reason has no benefit whatsoever. No benefit whatsoever. No benefit whatsoever. And the implications of this for the, the fundamental structure of the world, it, it, it says it puts a limit on what we can know about the complexity of the world. Well, maybe it does. I mean, let's look at it this way. The normal notion was that in mathematics, reason is, truth is black or white, and we can know everything. But it was thought that maybe in physics or biology, things don't work so well. Yeah, yeah. You know, and this was viewed as a flaw, and theoretical physicists try to do better. We're getting closer to the... The, 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 the ideal the of mathematics, right, right, and the hope right. was that one day biology, chemistry become more oh, mathematical. Right, right. Yeah. But now, all of a sudden, mathematics itself is infected with the problem. <laughs> you know, so obviously mathematicians don't, are not very pleased with this idea because they become mathematicians precisely because they would need absolute truth. They have black or white. We have black or white personalities. We have a flaw. We need to, you know, we can't function in the real world to a certain extent. That's why we go to the world of ideas where every, the light is either absolutely black or absolutely white. Truth is absolutely black or absolutely white. You know, we're refugees from the messy world <laughs> of of reality. But now pure math itself is infected with this. So, so physicists, some physicists uh, that are friends of mine, well they think this is just fine because they always thought that pure mathematicians were, how do you say, too conceited, thinking that they had absolute truth and look, sneering you, you know, at other people who were not worthy, you know, did not reach this level. And I think that a, a more mature judgment, based on, on, on the work of Gödel and Turing and my own efforts to continue on this train of thought, suggests that maybe math is not that different from empirical sciences as people usually thought. But I don't know. I mean, this is very controversial, obviously, and this is not the kind of thing that one lifetime is enough to settle. And obviously the immune system of the math community mm -hmm. is antibodies are fighting these new ideas. You know, I'm, I'm, I like playing with ideas. I'm proposing this, uh, but, you know, I don't have an absolutely watertight case for this. I have some evidence for this, and uh, some people say I'm jumping to conclusions, but I'm throwing this out, and, you know, so we can discuss it, and the future will see who was right and who was wrong. Maybe both sides have some truth.